Hi there, welcome to another episode of Walk the Word. Really good to have you with us. I hope you're keeping well as we seek to just read God's Word together because we believe it is it brings life to our soul. It's our daily bread. And as we seek to live it out day by day in our lives. And we are in uh, the book of Mark, Mark's Gospel at the moment. And we're going to be reading from chapter 6, verse 45. Uh, so the passage is posted in the uh, comment uh, the um, description section below this video so you can read along there or you can open your bibles get that book off your shelf and open it to mark 6 uh, here we go mark 6 verse 45 immediately jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to bethsaida where he dismissed the crowd after leaving them he went up on the mountainside to pray later that night the boat was in the middle of the lake and he was alone on land he saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. Shortly before dawn, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them, but when he saw them, but when they saw him, rather, walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them. And the wind died down. They were completely amazed, for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever he, they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces, they begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. OK, so I just want to look at this story again where Jesus is walks out to his disciples, walks on water. That well-known kind of passage, one of the things Jesus is famous for, he walk, walked on water. And uh, just going to pull a few things out of this passage. And, and the first thing I want to say is, it says he saw his disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. They were straining at the oars and they're in a struggle here. And I wonder if it's just a, almost like a metaphor for our lives. So often it can feel that we're straining at the oars of our lives, can't it? That perhaps we are struggling against winds that are opposing us, coming in the opposite direction, whatever that means for you. But life can often feel like that. Life can feel a struggle. Life can feel a strain. Life can feel like, like we are straining at the oars of the boat and trying to work hard just to get anywhere. And they weren't really succeeding. They weren't really getting anywhere. I wonder if you feel a bit like that at the moment in your life. But then what we find is uh, Jesus walks out to them on the water. And it's a remarkable miracle, isn't it? I mean, what more can you say? Jesus... We, we, we've seen him heal the sick, we've seen him raise the dead, we've seen him forgive sins, we've seen him calm the storm. Just a chapter before, Jesus calms the storm, so he's, he, he's Lord of the storm, and here he is again walking on water, showing that Jesus doesn't just calm the storm, but he can walk over the storm. He can walk through the storm to get to you, right? And I think in, in, in one sense, that's, that's a very real, tangible thing in our day to day experience that Jesus is there. He's there in the storm of your life and we can he, he, he is there for us to, to to know him and turn to him and find him and find strength and peace and life in him day by day. But it's also, I think, a picture of salvation that Jesus walked through the storm of the cross to get to you, to reach you, to, to, to get to your life. Because this is a miraculous thing here. He's walking on water, right? And the miracle is that Jesus came from heaven to earth and died on the cross, taking the storm of sin and the punishment of sin upon himself so that we could go free and so that we could walk peacefully through. While he suffers and takes this in our place, we can walk peacefully through and find peace with God. So it's a wonderful picture here, not only uh, of, of the, the kind of peace we can find day by day as Jesus is with us, but also what he's done for us in war. He's not only the one who calms the storm, he's the one who walks through the storm and over the storm to reach you and to save you. And then we see this, 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 this amazing statement, I think, 
He says, take courage. As the disciples see him, they're afraid. No kidding, this guy's walking on water, okay? None of us would expect to see that. What is going on here? Um, he cries out, he says, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. And there's a reference there to, to I am. You know, it is I. We know that God calls himself the great I am. Um, and Jesus elsewhere says, before Abraham was, I am. It's almost like a, a similar statement, it is I. It's God. This is Jesus. This is God's son coming to them to meet them. So don't be afraid. So whatever storms of life you are facing, we don't have to be afraid because it says then he climbed into the boat with them. Jesus is in the boat of your life. He's with you in the storm. And so whatever might be coming, whatever you're feeling at the moment, you might be straining at the oars of life. You might be struggling. The truth is Jesus is right there with you. And we don't have to be afraid, we don't have to be troubled, but we can turn to him and realise He, the Lord of the storm is in the boat. The one who calms the winds and the waves is in the boat. The one who walks over the storm to get to us and get in the boat with us is with you. He's with you by the Holy Spirit. He's in your life and he's, and he's close, closer than you think, closer than you realise. And we must understand that because... It says, they were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. It's kind of a weird statement, isn't it? They've not understood. Basically, they're saying they just hadn't grasped what Jesus was, was really getting at through the loaves and through this, 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 kind of tramp, this, this miracle that's happening here. Their hearts were hardened. And I think the point is this. Uh, Jesus is demonstrating through the loaves, through the, the feeding of the 5,000, He's saying that I'm the bread of heaven. I'm God's provision. Yes, I give, I give you physical bread, but actually what I want you to see is I'm the bread of life, as it says in John. I'm God's provision for your life. I'm God's provision for your salvation. I'm God's provision for your situation right now. Even as you're in the storm and you're struggling at yours, I'm your provision. But they hadn't understood. They hadn't understood G yet anyway, at least, that Jesus is, is the new bread of heaven. He's the one that can sustain us. He's the one that can give us life, even in the midst of, of storms and trials and troubles and difficulties. And they've kind of not grasped it yet. Have you grasped it yet? Have you understood yet that this one who calms the storm is in the boat with you? This one who walks through the storm to meet with you and get in your boat is with you. And he's the bread of life. He's the one who, yes, he gave the people physical bread, but he wanted them to know, I'm your spiritual bread. I'm God's provision. Jesus is God's provision for your situation right now. So I'd encourage you, turn to him, pray to him, seek him, walk with him today. That's, that's the, that's the uh, application I want to draw out of this. Yeah, so I encourage you, read the passage again, turn it into prayer. Ask for the Holy Spirit. Turn to Jesus right now because he is the provision, God's provision for your life and for your week this week. OK, so have a great week and we'll see you again soon.